Take a look at them today. Dressed to the T. These beautiful people would have broken through in some manner, shape, or form to be alongside the President of the United States. So I don't respect your right to take the Fifth Amendment. Not at all. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Salai. Did you wear a tuxedo that night? Are you going to take the Fifth on that? On the advice of counsel, I respectfully assert my rights. Let me ask you a question. Were you there? On the advice of counsel. Are you here today, Mr. Salai? Are you here right now? You got to get an answer from your attorney on that? This committee gave you every opportunity to speak behind closed doors. Did it not, Mr. Salai? Did it not? You did, but you didn't afford us any legal protection. You wouldn't. You wanted us to speak versus our attorneys. So we did give you that opportunity. Without any legal protection. And yet you continue to evade every opportunity to present your side of the story. The fact that you know you now appear here and are unwilling to speak to any details. The fact of the matter is that you used the Secret Service to say so many nice things about them, and what you've done is defied the will of authority. This whole episode has been a stunt and a charade upon your part to gain attention and notoriety. So desperately you seek, apparently. I want to turn my attention away from you, because I don't believe that you have anything to offer this committee. And it is my hope that they will be prosecuted to the full ex extent of the law. Let me, let me ask you about this report that's come up this morning that on September 26th, the two of you attended another event, the Congressional Black Caucus Dinner. Uh, reports are you were uninvited to that and were escorted out. We have a photograph of you that was taken alongside New York Congressman Charlie Rangel. What was the, what was the reason for you attending that? Were you invited? Uh, yes, we were invited. Uh, this is the first time I've ever heard, uh, uh, you know, another uh, false accusation against my wife and I saying that uh, we weren't invited there. Uh, we were invited there by uh, 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 the Gardner Law Group. We were a uh, guest of, of theirs, proud guest of theirs. And uh, no, were we escorted out? Of course not. That's, you know, another um, gossip rumor, just unfortunately like how this story I uh, got started through a gossip column. Snuck in and had no tickets. You and snuck Ted, in and Ted. to the Congressional Black Caucus dinner? We snuck in the side door. Oh, no. All of a sudden, five or six Secret Service guys come over and they're like, you can't be here. Right off the top tonight and only on Fox 5, it may have happened before. It appears the White House state dinner wasn't the first time that Virginia couple showed up to a party without an invite. The Salahi's own photos are putting them under even more scrutiny. The couple snapping pictures at the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation dinner, a high-profile event, but they had no business being there. Fox 5's Will Thomas broke the story at 10. He's in the studio now with more on his exclusive interview. Will. Brian, it was an event attended by President Obama and the First Lady, along with 4,000 guests at the D.C. Convention Center. The Congressional Black Caucus Foundation says the Salahis were not invited to the dinner, but they managed to get inside. And our well-placed sources tell us they literally snuck in through a makeshift kitchen. Multiple photo ops. Mikhail and Tariq Salahi posing with distinguished guests at the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation's awards dinner, September 26th. The images plastered on the couple's Facebook page. Senator Roland Burris, Representatives Bobby Scott, Charles Rangel, and Patrick Kennedy. But their caption for Congressman Kennedy says Ted Kennedy Jr. The Congressional Black Caucus Foundation says the Salahis were uninvited dinner guests. Lance Jones is a communications official with the foundation. I was walking past a table and I had somebody kind of lightly grab my arm and, and kind of pull me aside and, you know, I asked them, what can I do for you? Uh, they, they informed me that somebody at their table did not necessarily belong. 
Jones says the couple knew they were busted and didn't offer an excuse. I asked for the identification, I asked for their tickets, which they could not produce. And at that time, I told our security guards that we're going to walk out and uh, walk them out, and they're not going to be allowed back in. According to multiple reports, the Salahis may be reality cast members in the Bravo TV Housewives franchise. The Congressional Black Caucus Foundation says Bravo requested access to the dinner but was denied. The foundation says the couple showed up at the dinner with cameras in tow anyway but didn't get in. Instead, according to our sources, the Salahis made it inside the dinner through a busboy catering entrance here at the D.C. Convention Center. I knew that there had to be some sort of uh, way for them to get in without necessarily uh, obeying the rules, per se. The foundation says people routinely try to crash their annual dinner. It is an A-list ticket, after all. But given the White House incident, this may start to paint a pattern with the Salahis. The Secret Service director and the Virginia couple have been called to testify before Congress this week on Thursday, in fact. Some lawmakers want to see criminal charges if the couple lied to get inside the White House, Brian. I was shocked by it, but I don't definitely put it past him and his wife to do something like this. Dr. Ishmael Salahi says the White House dinner crash is just the latest in a pattern for his badly behaving brother and his wife. Anybody that d digs a little bit on them will start to find a lot of stuff that uh, they're really into the whole media thing and they love the attention and the press. People say that you left because of what happened with the Salahis. Can you talk about that? Well, you know what? That really is um, the past. Um, as I've said before, you know, it's important for Washington to be focused on those things that are so important to running our country. Uh, you know, I felt that it was time for me uh, to move on. So you got burned so bad. That's why former White House Social Secretary Desiree Rogers got fired over it. The cast of The View was so scornful of Michelle Salahi that she claimed she got roughed up by my pal Whoopi Goldberg. Their former publicist, Mahogany Jones, is about to speak for the first time on TV about that fateful November night. Were you asked to give an impression of the Salahis before uh, the grand jury? Yes. And um, what, did, what was your testimony? Uh, initially, my impression, they were very charismatic people. I mean, very believing people. Um, I, I enjoyed them. Very charming. Very, very charming. Mikhail just lit up the room um, initially when I met them. But you speak of their charm in the past tense. Why? What happened to disabuse you of the notion that they were nice people? Well, they have amazing ability to be deceitful and manipulative, I think. Um, oh, so, so far, the deceitful, manipulative, go ahead. The reason why I say that is because I believed them in the beginning. There was a lot of things that um, I believe that, you know, they were resourceful. Um, we had a nice conversation. Um, but it, it, as things went on and the smoke cleared, I saw kind of a different side of the Salahis um, and working with them. This respectful in the, for the profession, things of that nature. So are they hustlers? Um, they're, uh, to me, they're grifters. I, I think they're just very savvy in marketing and idea. And, and grifter is even more <laughs> serious charge than hustler. I love being a cheerleader because for five minutes you're out on the field in front of 90,000 fans. It's just, it makes you feel amazing. You have to be on the six. Whatever you do, you have to be back to the front on six. Here we go. So you are at eight. Step one to the back two. Go three. Four, five, six, stop. Hold seven, pose eight. Okay. Ready? Two. Five, six, seven, eight. So back to the front. Head is down, palms are down. Hold Whatever down. you need to do. And then pose. I love getting together with the girls. I feel like I'm 20 again. For a minute, you think, okay, I'm so cute. I can do it. Can I do the splits? Yeah, I can. Now, stop. Now, ready, ready, ready. Hi, baby. 
We still got it. We're still rolling. When you first look, look at me, you think, God, she has no substance. And it was in the Oval, you said. The Oval, yeah, oval Office. Oval yes. Office. Oh. After I talk with them a little bit, they see that I have a heart of gold, and there is a whole lot of substance here. Wow. We have to start with this. Yesterday, the Real Housewives of D.C. were here, including... Kale. Mikhail Salahi, who you may remember from her, let's say, surprising appearance at a White House party last November. Things got very heated on the air and backstage, especially after allegations by the other housewives that Mikhail's husband threw a drink at one of them. Now, in case you missed it, here's a taste. Beauty is in all what sizes. Have to do with him abusing because you've been abusing me. Of... You're a woman oh, abusing me. Excuse me. Could you get back right to the to White House, please? Okay. okay. If you like us to, we can go. Okay. Mm. Afterwards, Mikhail was very upset about what was said about her on the air, and then I was told that she thought I hit her. So I went up to her and I told her that she knew I didn't hit her, and yeah, you know how I said it. Choice words. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> and I make no, you know, apology for my choice words. Mm -hmm. But then her husband got in my face, had his Blackberry out and started taking pictures of me. And needless to say, I really went off then. I'm the hottest, and I have the most friends. I'm DC. I went to a, a school at a young age at 13 called Randolph Macon Academy, and that's a military school in Front Royal, Virginia. I have a lot of friends that knew him growing up. Really? Knew him growing up? Punk. There's a reason he was sent to military school. Why? Wow, he's a problem. I don't care about that guy. I've never wanted to know about that guy. That guy is like a joke to me. A joke. These people have a track record in this town of wronging people, not paying their bills. Mm. It's bad. But I really believe that Mikkel means well. She's not done, but she's lost. <laughs> 